Um, so the talk is preparing uh, game design students to be effective games user researchers. Uh, and so just a little bit about myself. Um, I am a lecturer in games design at Brunel University in London. I am the master's director for the um, program in digital games theory and design. I'm also the uh, postgraduate director for those who are doing PhDs in games at Brunel University. Um, I have a bachelor and a master's degree in sociology and a PhD in film studies, um, but I'm a sociologist at heart, social scientist at heart, uh, and I put focus in games uh, in brackets because for out, throughout the three degrees that I've done, all of my research has been on player experience and the player avatar research, um, oh, sorry, the player avatar relationship. Uh, and finally, uh, a bit dated, but in 2009, I worked as a playtest consultant and moderator at Electronic Arts in Montreal. Um, and while I know we've come a long way since then, it's really important for me to mention because um, it really kind of inspired the shift from researching player experience to researching games user research specifically. Um, oh, also those are some of the things I've published and some of the games I've worked on. Um, I just want to talk a bit about uh, the program that we teach. It's a bachelor, uh, undergraduate, honors degree in game design. It is housed in the communications department uh, and screen media, not in a computer science. So um, our goal is to teach, it looks a bit fuzzy from here actually. Um, our goal is to teach the creative process of games design. Um, and so we have classes like introduction to game design, digital prototyping, asset creation, uh, situated within historical context for our students um, for the first year. And all our students take all the same classes throughout. Uh, there's no real choice as they go through. Um, second year we do the same thing, but they have game development and advanced asset creation. Uh, and they get some options for the first time uh, we started last year to allow them to start focusing a little bit more. And then in the third year, it's mostly self-directed uh, research. They get to make a game or write a dissertation, um, which we expect about four to 500 hours worth of, of work for that particular project, and they have to do two of them. Uh, when we created the options, I was asked to bring in games user research um, as something that we, I think is really important for a design student to understand, uh, as well as with the, the hope that we can kind of develop it further. We've introduced three new routes that started this year, which is a bachelor in game design, brackets game studies, uh, brackets game artistry, and brackets game development. And hopefully, um, through some of the contacts I make today, we can start pushing towards a brackets games user research. Um, just gonna take a drink. So this is a 12 week module that I put together for um, the second level. Um, it's an optional course, so we don't get all the students, unfortunately, I, I would like it that they all take it. Um, but it's divided into three sections. The first section is a theoretical component where we teach theories of fun and flow, engagement, difficulty and challenge. Um, and I think this is important not only from a design perspective, but also for user research, because when you're being asked to kind of test for some of these things, if you have a theoretical understanding of what they are, um, I think you can come up with more nuanced questions um, to get better results. The second section in light gray, we cover a class on why, when, and how to test. Um, this comes a bit out of my social science background, where uh, it is important to understand that testing at different parts of the development cycle will uh, have different purposes and different research methods will yield different results. Um, there is no one best uh, tool, I don't think, uh, and if you understand what you're looking for at different stages, you can learn how to choose which methods you need to use at that time. And then we do uh, heuristics, analytics, biometrics, which is always the real, this one that our students are really keen on, except we don't have the uh, technology to help them um, learn from it any more than either videos or online content. Um, and then focusing on my background, uh, we, we, we do a week on qualitative methods. And this is because it's a cost-efficient way for games design students to learn research tools that they can test their own games or each other's games. And then in the dark blue, um, we have, this is the practice-based section, 
where we have workshops and a lot of activities around understanding the demographics, who your participants are, how important selecting your participants are to the types of results you'll get. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, surveys, questionnaires, interviews. Uh, I get a lot of people who claim to think they can do a survey because they can put 10 sentences together. Uh, but understanding the nuances of things like leading questions, priming, um, and knowing that the ways in which you construct your surveys or your interviews uh, influence the types of results you get. Um, and then communicating results and putting it all together. Um, this is where I get to kind of draw on some of my, albeit very old, um, material from my time at EA, where we can look through some of the reports that were produced for the teams that I worked with. Uh, and the students really like to see hands-on stuff, even if it's old. Um, so yeah. Um, so the, the aim of that particular course within the context of the game design program is to teach design students, the people who are making games, um, the value of playtesting and user research. A lot of the times they think they can just make their games right through because they have all the great ideas uh, and then don't understand why nobody likes their game when they're done. Um, to teach the purpose, again, this comes back to the when, how, and uh, to test. Uh, the different methods that are available to them uh, as young game designers, perhaps when they're doing their own um, pro projects, or as they kind of move up into smaller groups. Um, and then the vocabulary, learning the language of user research so that as design students, uh, they can communicate what they're looking for to a user research team. And I think this is a really important skill. Uh, and communication, and that one works both ways, uh, tied to the vocabulary. If you're a team and you are looking for specific questions uh, or specific answers to some of your design problems, uh, you have to be able to communicate that. But as mentioned earlier, I think in the first talk, how do you communicate those results back to the team? You might be well versed in theories of engagement, uh, but I don't think a team wants to read an essay um, you know, with a nice prose-worthy uh, results. So Seb mentioned uh, the transferable skills, and I'm drinking out of the wrong water bottle. That's great. Um, one of the things that we do with our program over time is really focus on these three um, transferable skills. Um, we have three years to do it, so it's, we have a, and a lot of modules, which is really effective. Uh, and those are communication, as I just mentioned, both oral and written. Uh, they do have to take theory classes, much to many of their chagrin, and I force them to write essays. Um, but, you know, it's a skill that they learn to articulate how they're trying to express themselves. In the cooperative area, they do a lot of teamwork, we do game jams, we have courses that are team, um, that kind of try to mo mimic the um, game design team structure. And what this does is that it teaches our students leadership roles, which I think are really important, because you want to be able to lead in an effective way that student, uh, sorry, that your team members want to work for you and do their best work. Um, but also more importantly in those teams is how to be a good collaborator, how to be a good team member, how to um, let the leader of that team lead. Uh, and I think that's a really important skill that when we're in teams, we all want our voices heard, but how do you do that effectively? Um, and then the interpersonal skills. Uh, in our first year, we teach a course called Business Contexts, which is geared specifically to the games industry, where we teach our students how to do CVs, cover letters, and we do mock job interviews. They have to come in, they have to research a company, and they have to interview for that particular company. And then they get feedback, they get evaluated on it, um, and we do this throughout the three years so that they have interview skills. Um, specifically to the industry that they're hoping to get into. Um, empathy, I know was talked about last year, so I won't cover. Uh, and collegiality, a big part of this is um, how to get along with, with your teammates, uh, even if they're not necessarily people that you would socialize with. And finally, trust, and I think trust is really important, I know from a sociology a research perspective uh, and games user research that you need to have trust uh, between the interviewer or the researcher and the participants. They have to feel comfortable with you to be able to tell you things that may not, they may feel um, uncomfortable saying or critical stuff, negative feedback. 
Um, and that's a, that's a, that, those are interpersonal skills that are, uh, some people have naturally, but that you can be taught over time of how to um, get people to warm up to you. So those are some of the transferable skills. I'm probably way over time. Uh, okay, just last, two last slides. Um, always bad with titles. So what my goal for presenting here today is to kind of open up a discussion with um, games user research industry locally um, and kind of tell you what it is that we do um, and so what we can offer your uh, industry is to prepare games design students to communicate effectively with games user research teams, uh, to also teach the soft and transferable skills that are useful, hopefully, to you, uh, as well as provide a broad and formal education. And what I mean by that is we teach courses on things like uh, research methods, um, game studies, what is fun, what is play, what is a game, all of the theoretical components as well, as social cultural context, et cetera. So they get a broader education than just a very narrow focus. And then the cheeky part, what I hope to get from you, uh, is a deeper understanding of what other hard or skills and soft skills that you want when you're doing these interviews with potential employees uh, coming out of university or whatnot. Um, to work together to develop future curriculum and games user research, and that's what I was saying about hoping to kind of eventually develop a games user research route within our game design program. And finally, <clears throat> more access for students deciding industry careers. Um, this is really important because we do have lots of people come in and give a two-hour guest speaker talk uh, to our students. They say all of the things about the, you know, all the key points about whatever the job is, but what, as my colleague likes to say, um, what do you do on a Tuesday? That's what our students really want to know. They want to know, they want to have access to see uh, games user research in action within the places that it happens, not just in um, our classroom. And so I'm really hoping that after this talk, during the lunch break, during the social event, I can kind of meet and uh, network with some of you. Thank you very much. I drank your water, I drank someone's water. It's a sprite that one of our students did for us, for me. Nice. <laughs> I like it. All right. Okay. One more time. Hello. Uh, oh, yeah. I can hear that then. Hi, Alistair. Um, hello. Hello. Uh, quick question then. So, Kelly, you're trying to teach the soft skills to your students. What methods do you find is the most effective to teach, you know, a difficult sort of concept like interview techniques? Sorry, like what? I didn't oh, hear that. What, what, oh, I'll try that again. <laughs> um, what methods do you find most effective to teach sort of complex um, concepts like interview, te techniques, interview to techniques to your students? Um, luckily, we have a small cohort, um, and a lot of our classes are seminar style or workshop style. Uh, so, a lot of it is practice. I know that sounds so silly, but we go around the room, we have each other, a lot of the times we'll have people interviewing each other, um, and then I'll kind of walk around and give feedback on those, and then kind of help them with things like body language, eye contact. Uh, we had somebody come in and talk about the body language thing, which was really strange. Um, that I found out that this is like a grown-up sucking your thumb. That's what this is, you know, I always thought it was because you were mad. But, uh, um, so yeah, so it's a lot of practice. We have a lot of contact hours with our students. We have one cohort, uh, one class per year. Uh, um, our intake this year, I think, was 62, so it's quite small. Um, so it, it's a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of contact. Cool, thanks. Interactive contact. Thank you. Hello, uh, I'm Inger, I'm sitting at EA Dice, but I've also been a keen game jammer for a long, long, long time. And you mentioned you do game jams as part of the education. My question is, have you also integrated games user research into those jam processes? And how does that look? So I haven't. 
uh, yet. Um, I haven't even been able to infiltrate um, some of the other, and I use that word <laughs> very specifically. Um, so at level two, they have projects where they have to create games, and I've been trying to convince the module leaders on that, those classes to let my students play test their games. But there's a lot of tension there, so we haven't yet, but it's something that I have been in talks with the undergraduate uh, leader, so we're getting there. Hi, uh, one more question about that, pretty much in those lines. Uh, do you also have kind of a lab or a space where the students actually do a whole study from end to end? So, so not just practicing the, the interview, which was actually fantastic, but doing a whole yeah. study. Yeah, so their final project is a portfolio. Um, and what they have to do is design a playtest from start to finish. They have to provide in this portfolio everything from the recruitment materials that, they, uh, that we talk about throughout the course, um, how to recruit users, different demographics and stuff. Uh, they have to provide uh, their questionnaire or whatever type of um, uh, participant feedback that they're using. They have to uh, give a write-up about what the space is that they're using because this, the, the context in which playtesting happens makes a huge difference on the results. Um, and then they actually have to go through a playtest. A lot of the students like to use their own games that they've been testing. Last year we had two students swap games so that they weren't kind of biased about getting some of the, the results that we were talking about earlier, kind of that. You know, negative feedback, um, and at the very minimum, I tell them they can take any game on the market, take a play sequence, they have to come up with a concept, so from that first theoretical section, um, they have to be testing for something within that theoretical section, they have to justify their, um, uh, the methods that they use, and then they have to provide a, a report. So all of those components are their final assessment. And we have a lab on site that we teach all of our design in, we have 42 computers set up, um, the first slide, um, there was a, an advertisement for playtesting that our master's students were doing with their final dissertation game. So, so they, they do have access and that is their final assessment. Hi, uh, so if you give the design students all this feedback, do they actually have time to implement it and iterate on their stuff or is it very much kind of they do the game, it gets handed off, gets tested, and then comes back. Do they get to work in the feedback you're giving them? Um, I know the students who took, as I said, it's an optional module, so not all of the design students have to take it, which is a shame. Uh, I do know that one of the students did um, do it throughout the year. She timed it with her own project. Um, and then it's the final year that they, um, that they make a game from start to finish, that they submit their design document or their uh, yeah, so she designed it specifically so that she could uh, create her game, do play testing at different intervals, and integrate it. Thank you. Any other questions? No? Thank you very much. Thank you.